Now at 6 a.m. on WKYT this morning, a crime alert in Lexington. Two people are on the run this morning after an overnight shooting. Hundreds of EKU students are sleeping somewhere else this morning after being evacuated from their dorm. And today, U.S. Senator Rand Paul will make his run for the White House official. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Top of the morning to you from the WKYT News Team. Good to have you with us here on Tuesday, April 7th. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. I hear there's a little basketball game last night for yeah. all of those interested. Duke won if you didn't stay up. <laughs> <laughs> Duke wins the national title. Uh, Wisconsin came back late, but yeah, uh, yeah still the, the Blue Devils rolled yeah. on. So maybe you watched it, maybe you <laughs> didn't. But uh, one thing we are watching is the radar, right, yeah. Micah? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're looking on Defender this morning. You can see the bulk of it is really south of the BG Parkway. All this is heading down toward the London Corbin area, go into Whitley County there in Williamsburg. That's the trajectory of this. If you watch this in the loop, it's really not moving northbound whatsoever. The loop actually takes this to the south and southeast. So heads up, I would say a line from Danville to McKee, down the Howe Rogers Parkway, all the way to, say, uh, Whitesburg and Pikeville, south of that line. That's your best bet for thunderstorms. So Lexington, we're not at a good chance, and neither Richmond, but there's a possibility of that. It's really south of 64. You're going to have the better opportunity during the morning hours. Temperatures are in the 50s and 60s. It's a pretty good feel. By the afternoon, it's 73 spotty thunderstorms, but look, it gets much warmer than that. We're talking 80s with the potential for severe weather. I jot down those details coming to you in just about 10 minutes. Okay, see you then. Thank you. New this morning, Lexington police are looking for two people after an overnight shooting. This one happened around 2 30 this morning outside at Camelot West, a strip club on Alexandria Drive. WKYT's Mark Barber is there tracking the investigation live this morning. Good morning, morning Rebecca and Bill. The manager of the strip club says right as he was locking up and everyone was walking outside early this morning, a white Cadillac pulled into this parking lot and two people started firing into the crowd. Now, police say one man was shot in the back. I'm told he was rushed to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Now, two vehicles and a building were also struck by the spray of bullets. Investigators tell us the shooters, a woman and a man, opened fire on the crowd around 2.40 this morning. In the past few years, one man was killed and another was hurt in shootings here at Camelot. The manager of the club says they have increased their security. He tells me that they now pat down people at the door and they have added metal detectors to, cre to keep crimes like this from happening again. I don't know who it was towards. I don't know what it was about, but I can assure you that it wasn't none of the staff or dancers or employees here in the club. So we take extra precautions on that as we're trying to clean it up. The manager says that they've done everything they can do here to increase their security, so they are planning to reopen again later today. Now, as for the two shooters, police say they are still looking for them, and they're hoping that a tip from the public will help them make an arrest. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, thank you so much, Mark. We're also tracking a developing story out of Richmond where hundreds of EKU students have been allowed back into their dorm rooms. A sprinkler went off overnight, flooding several floors and evacuating the building. WKYT Sean Moody is live for us at EKU with the very latest on this situation. Well, good morning, Rebecca and Bill. After several hours of waiting to get back into this building, the students who live here are now heading back inside. They'd been out of their rooms since about 1.30 this morning when that sprinkler uh, went off. The building just reopened about a half hour ago. Facilities official told me one of the sprinklers in a room on the fourth floor of Clay Hall went off around that time. He said water seeped out across that floor and then down into the floors below. Students were evacuated from all 10 floors of the building. Some went to stay with friends. Others went to the student center. One person said there were students sleeping in cars out here in the parking lot. Some were concerned about that water getting into the electronics in their rooms. A facilities worker told me the worst of it was probably just clothes getting wet. He said he didn't believe any electronics inside those rooms were damaged. Now, this building holds about 270 students. Again, they're all heading back into their rooms this morning and maybe getting a little bit of sleep before their classes. Hopefully, they don't have any big tests to contend with after that late night. Live in Richmond, Sean Moody, WKYT.
All right, John, thank you. Well, U.S. Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky is ready to test just how much change voters want, both for their government and for the GOP. The Tea Party favorite and frequent antagonist of leaders within the Republican Party will begin his White House campaign today. He's kicking off the run with a rally this morning and going into midday in downtown Louisville. He will then jet to some early nominating states with a pitch aimed at the libertarian corners of the GOP. And last month, the WKYT Herald Leader Bluegrass poll looked at Senator Rand Paul and his run for the White House. 30% of those polled think Senator Paul should get out of politics and not run for any office. 23% think he should run for both president and Senate next year. 19% say he should just run for the presidency. Paul begins the 2016 race as the second fully declared candidate behind Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. He could face, though, as many as 20 rivals for the nomination before the leadoff Iowa caucuses early next year. Well, 6.05 is the time this morning. We have developing news out of southern Kentucky. A death investigation is underway in Rockcastle County. The deputy coroner says a white woman in her 40s was found yesterday in the Crooked Creek area. Right now, the woman's name has not been released. Investigators have not said how they think this woman died. One well, more rain today could cause problems in many flooded communities. Franklin County is still under a state of emergency this morning. Our officer Don shot this sky first video of the swollen Kentucky River. You can see just how close the water has come to several homes. The river has receded some, but certain roads around Frankfort are still underwater. Many in the area say flooding has become a fact of life. No, from Past floods, it has to be like around 40 feet before it starts into the house. It's usually very peaceful and very beautiful out here. It's just the river water that gives us <laughs> trouble every now and then. Well, folks say they will be paying close attention to weather reports over the next few days, of course, since more rain is in our forecast. Well, it's a similar scene in Bourbon County where people are cleaning up from the damage caused by flooding there. Emergency management says Stoner Creek rose nearly 10 feet in less than 12 hours during Friday's storm. One couple says they came home to find three feet of water inside their house. With more rain and storms in the forecast this week, stay with WKYT for the latest weather updates. You can download the First Alert Defender radar app for your iPad or smartphone. You can also go to WKYT.com for the latest weather information. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris and First Alert Defender. Well, those thunderstorms waking a lot of us up this morning south of the BG Parkway and south of 64. That's where you're seeing the better opportunity of that. Now, as you look across the way, we still have some rain in the central and northern zones, but it's the thunderstorm activity that's going to bring a lot of rainfall to some areas. You look southbound all the way to Somerset, making your way across 27. Now, this is heading over toward Laurel County area. London, Corbin, you'll get in on the mix. If it sticks together, because right now it looks like it's falling apart just a bit, we'll have to watch that. But if it sticks together, the next 15 to 30 minutes heads up for that as that rain creeps into your region. Monticello got the brunt of it, but Whitley City, Stearns, Pine Knot, you might be out of the way. I think it moves just to the north of you guys through Whitley City and actually northbound. But it does look like uh, we'll start to see that funnel through. Heads up Williamsburg, heads up Whitley City. Next, I would say 15 to about 45 minutes for you guys. And then we track north just a little bit. Go toward Lebanon. Make your way across 68 into Campbellsville. These are areas that have had tremendous amounts of rain already this morning. We're adding to that this morning, too, across, say, 68, and then making your way off into Boyle County. Now, Boyle County, I want to show you this. I would say Lebanon, make your way into Liberty, maybe even north of Liberty. Dunville, you're in the mix, but that area right through here, north of that region, no real thunderstorm threat. Harrodsburg, I think you just stay with just rain for the most part. You get us some rumbles of thunder, but the heaviest portion really stays south of Lebanon, south of Liberty. That's the best area to actually pick up these thunderstorms from Campbellsville. Heads up some high water issues in your area there in Taylor County. 60 degrees now in London. We're at 59 in Frankfurt, we have had some rain across central zones, and we'll get a few showers throughout the next couple of hours. Thunderstorms really stay south of 64. That's your best bet. Now, the bulk of it fades away right around noontime in the southeastern portion of our viewing area. Afternoon, it's only a few thunderstorms here and there, so I, I expect the afternoon to be much drier than this morning. That's your best bet to maybe head out and knock some things out. 
off into the evening and into the night, you still have at least that opportunity uh, to at least see some rain. Strong to severe potential that's really coming Thursday night into Friday morning. Your best bet is early Friday morning, and then it looks to slide on out as we get off into Friday afternoon and into the weekend. There is your seven day forecast as those storms do pick up for today, tomorrow, and Thursday. It's really about the temperatures. We have a few storms here and there, but the temperatures skyrocket, upper 70s, lower 80s. I think Thursday, it looks like afternoon you'll have the best bet uh, in the northern zones, but it's really Thursday night and Friday morning that we need to be watching. Once it slides on out, looks pretty good there for the weekend. Saturday and Sunday, 68, 70 degrees. That's what we want. But unfortunately, we got to go through some high yeah. water issues before we get there. Well, everything's a little temporary here it in is. spring, yeah, right? Absolutely. We get the rain, and then even the weekend, it, it looks like after that, it's a rain again. Back so and forth. There you go. Thank you very much, Micah. Our time this morning is 610, and each morning we bring you weather and traffic together. And here's Officer Don with a look at what's happening out there on the roads. Good morning. Good morning. Well, of course, roads are a little wet. We have to deal with that this morning. But uh, right now, there are no wrecks here in Lexington. As we just checked the circle where traffic's moving well, even through that construction zone on the inner and outer loops from uh, Old Frankfort Pike for Sales Road over to Leestown and that corridor, no major trouble as we get a look outside this morning at the interstate and on our Waze map, where live drivers are reporting a smooth ride in for now. If you're coming in from Clark County on 64, both directions, east and westbound, look okay. U.S. 60 is in good shape too, uh, and no problems to report in the Hamburg area. Now back to you. Okay, Don, thank you so much. 611 now on WKYT here on your Tuesday morning. Hey, it's good to have you along with us getting your day underway. Yes, well, including the latest on a massive fire in Louisville. We'll have the latest on that that's still burning.